-hmm. Yes, thank you, Ms. Herrera. Um, really, I don't have inspiration, but I have a lot of gratitude. A gratitude for all of our teachers, for all that you do every day, for the way you've led distance learning all this time, and for all you've done to prepare a safe return. I thank Ms. Herrera for organizing this event, and I thank Mr. Flynn for um, engaging with all of us here today in the learning. This is actually a fun time together, although it may look like it's a it's a PD. It's actually it's a fun learning time together that we'll have prizes and, and fun and appreciation for all that you do. So thank you all. And uh, I hand it back over to you, Ms. Herrera. Thank you. And I do want to mention just a few words before we begin that we will be recording this session today. So if you do not wish to be tape, please, you're welcome to turn off your video. And that way you, we won't capture your image in the video. Now, without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Mike Flynn, who is a professor at Ho Hoyt Yoke University in Boston. And I, I first met him or was it, learned about him through my own, through a meeting and a professional development uh, not too long ago. And today I'm very happy to share with you that he has some exciting games that you can use in your classroom for all grades grades uh, K through K. So now without further ado, please join me in welcoming Ms. Dr. Mike Flynn. Thank you. Thank you very much, Veronica. And uh, thank you all for being here. Um, so a couple of quick things. This is not, uh, first of all, it is Teacher Appreciation Week. And uh, the way that I'd like to show my appreciation to you all is I want to hook you up with weeks worth of really fun interactive resources that you can use with students that are all done for you. Uh, one of the things that I, I used to teach second grade, I taught second grade for 14 years before I started to work in the math world. And um, now I focus uh, with uh, preschool through or TK through 12th grade math and, and math education and how people learn math. That's kind of where my space is. And what I've developed during the pandemic are interactive slides that are tasks, riddles, logic problems, uh, interactive games everything designed to give students opportunities to collaborate, to work together, to learn math and to have fun. And uh, I often use these when I do my professional learning work. And what I thought today after talking with Veronica is, I'm just gonna give them all to you. Uh, we're gonna, I, I want you to have all of them. And I, there's a lot, there's almost 20 different ones. And these are tasks that could last up to a full period. If you have, if you teach math for 60 minutes, um, it could occupy that with some really interesting work. Um, some of these are shorter, so you could do as like a warm up for five minutes, and we'll play with some of them. And I'd love for you to just experience some math. So I know uh, lots with with the recording and stuff, you may not have your cameras on and stuff. Um, what we will do though is I I'm hoping that you might want to interact and talk with each other separately too in the breakout rooms. We won't record breakout rooms or anything. And I have the recording set and I should go in and spotlight myself right now, just in case, cause I'm gonna be putting picture in picture. Um, but the recording's only set to capture speaker view, which means that only the people talking uh, will be on camera. And you can certainly talk with your camera off. It's not a big deal. But uh, if, if you're willing in your breakout rooms, definitely try to play around with the math and have some fun. Uh, the math that we're gonna do, I try to set these up to be kind of, uh, grade level agnostic. In other words, I, I'd like it to be able to work in elementary grades and in high school because I believe in low floor, high ceiling tasks. And so riddles and things allow us to do that because if I'm an elementary student or a primary grade student, I can still think about the problem, but maybe with a less efficient strategy than a high school student who might be creating a formula and, and thinking about uh, graphing and, and using these other tools. So let's let's go ahead and just start with just a game. And I've never, this is brand new. I developed this one specifically for you all today. And I say developed because um, I shouldn't say that. I should say I, I modified this task that's not mine to work with for you all today. I've taken something that exists already out there, but I've designed it to work in remote uh, learning spaces. So we're going to start with... Uh, the first math problem, which is the zombie bridge crossing riddle. Out of curiosity, is anyone familiar with this? Put a yes in the chat if you've seen this before or you're familiar with it. It's kind of old. It's kind of been out for a while and um, it's kind of, it's, it's not in the front of everyone's mind usually. So if I don't see a yes, then I'll assume you haven't seen this before, which is great. And I'm going to revise it for you all. So uh, this starts with a video. We're going to watch a short video 
uh, that sets up the problem. And, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and try to solve the problem. Uh, so let me go ahead and just switch my audio for a second. I'm going to go to full screen for you all and take the picture and picture out and then switching the audio. And here we go for the problem setup. Taking that internship in a remote mountain lab might not have been the best idea. Pulling that lever with the skull symbol just to see what it did probably wasn't so smart either. But now is not the time for regrets, because you need to get away from these mutant zombies fast. With you are the janitor, the lab assistant, and the old professor. You've gotten a head start, but there's only one way to safety, across an old rope bridge spanning a massive gorge. You can dash across in a minute, while the lab assistant takes two minutes. The janitor is a bit slower and needs five minutes, and the professor takes a whole 10 minutes, holding onto the ropes every step of the way. By the professor's calculations, the zombies will catch up to you in just over 17 minutes. So you only have that much time to get everyone across and cut the ropes. Unfortunately, the bridge can only hold two people at a time. To make matters worse, it's so dark out that you can barely see, and the old lantern you grabbed on your way only illuminates a tiny area. Can you figure out a way to have everyone escape in time? Remember, no more than two people can cross the bridge together. Anyone crossing must either hold the lantern or stay right next to it, and any of you can safely wait in the dark on either side of the gorge. Most importantly, everyone must be safely across before the zombies arrive. Otherwise, the first zombie could step on the bridge while people are still on it. Finally, there are no tricks to use here. You can't swing across, use the bridge as a raft, or befriend the zombies. All right, so hopefully uh, you, you got a sense for the problem. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and share with you a Google slide that is designed to be interactive with it, and it has all the information that you're going to need on it. Uh, one of the things that I like to do with remote teaching is I want to make sure that when we're going to go into breakout rooms that anytime I'm doing any work with students that I don't want them to have to hold on to all the information in their heads. So in the slide, I'm going to, you're going to see things like the problem set up, um, the detail here of like how long it takes each of the people to cross. Um, and then the, a recap of the main thing. So that way you're not trying to remember what the video said. This way your, your brain can focus on solving the riddle and less on like remembering all the, the minute details. So like, you know, you've got just over 17 minutes. Uh, you have the bridge can only hold two people at a time. Um, you have to have somebody next to the lantern and stuff. And then these are the rules. These are all written on the Google slide. One of the things that you're going to find on the slide is that uh, the way I've set it up is, I'll go ahead and just uh, drop it in the chat right now, is one of the slides actually has all four characters as movable images so that you can actually physically move the people one over here, over here, you kind of model the problem, but you can also solve it using any other strategies you want. You can sort of do a math, uh, you can mathematize it, try to use um, you know, equations and things if you want, whatever you want to do, there's no rule for solving it. We're just going to play. And again, part of it is, is for you just to have fun with it. The other part is to think about how you might use this with students. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and drop in the chat. Here's the slide deck for you. Go ahead and make a copy of that. It's going to prompt you to make a copy. And then I'm going to go ahead and make breakout rooms so that we can have a chance just to dig in and play a little bit. And I'll make larger size breakout rooms because I'm not sure how many people are going to be active in it. Uh, but I'm going to play the numbers game think, thinking if we have five or six people per group, there'll be at least two people that want to think aloud with this. So when you get in your rooms, they're not recorded. You're welcome. Just kind of think aloud, kind of play with it. And you can also talk about like just if there's anything you notice about the slide deck that um, that is like, oh, this would be really cool for me to adapt for something else I'm already doing. Uh, everyone have a, OK getting the slide deck? We're all set with that. Sounds like it. No issues being reported. All right. So I don't know exactly because it's the first time I've ever tried this with a group. Uh, I don't have the time down. So what I'm going to do is make this an untimed breakout and I'm going to bounce between the two. And we may come back before you've solved everything. 
but it, it'll just give you a chance to kind of play with the game, solve the riddle. And then when we come back, we'll, we'll try a couple of, of light lift riddles and then I'll give you the folder and you can kind of play around and do like an explore with some of the other tasks. Any questions before I open breakout rooms? My is it possible that we could just play together as a group, Mike? Is sure. Oh, yeah. yeah, it'll yeah. be re recorded. I mean, if, if we wanted to, it's, it's being recorded right now. Do we want to, um, I just was thinking about participation. Um, if people, um, I mean, I could, yeah. So, so we can totally do that. But, and if people are okay talking on the recording, it's, it's good for me. If it's, if it's okay for you, it's all fun and games. That's, that's how I kind of look at it. So um, sure. Let's stay right in here and, uh, and let's go ahead and um, I'm going to just, uh, have people open up the, uh, the slide and start thinking through how you might want to solve it. Anyone have any ideas? I was thinking um, having the professor and the janitor go first. That's 15 minutes there. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, so we can kind of play around this. So you have the professor and the janitor make their way across. All right. And if does someone want to keep track of that? Um, and one of the things I can do if you want is I can actually also in the chat is I'll drop this link of my slide on here so we can actually all work on this off the same slide and I'm sharing my screen. So that way you're able to, uh, we can kind of work together and collaborate. So let me drop in the chat, the editable version of this. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the permissions on here. So give me one moment and I'll change it from view only to editing. Oops. Uh, oh no, I don't think that's gonna work. That's gonna be 18 minutes. So if you wanna jump in on this slide, anyone can jump in with me, but this is all trial and error. That's the fun thing with these riddles is, uh, so Mike, I have a question. So somebody has to carry the lantern back to the other side so two more can come, right? That's they can't correct. do it in the dark. That's correct. And you can leave someone on the other side. So let's say we wanted the, the professor to stay over here. Uh, the custodian can bring the lantern back and the professor can wait in the dark over here. Totally fine in the dark. You just can't cross the bridge in the dark because you know Indiana Jones kind of stuff. You don't know if a plank's gonna break out or something. So you need to be able to see where you're stepping. But the janitor takes five minutes to cross the bridge each time. Might mm -hmm. we want to consider someone a little quicker for that solo trip back and forth? That makes sense, right? Who would use, who, who should we, let's, let's do a reset. Let's start again. This is the fun part of it. We can kind of play. So who do we think should carry the lantern? I think the quickest one, because that person has to bring the lantern back each time. And that would be the, is it the boy or? Yeah. And he's like the intern, we can say. So the, the intern. intern. Yeah. The intern. All right. It, yeah. It only takes the intern one minute to cross the bridge. Perfect. So we got the intern and who should go with the intern? Oops. On the first trip. Done. Who's the most important character? <laughs> <laughs> Who everyone. Do we need the it's most? an all or nothing thing. So we have to save everyone, right? There's no, we're not sacrificing anyone. <laughs> but if they, uh, go, if they go together, are you adding the minutes? Say um, we take the, the boy and the janitor, would that be six minutes for, the, for them combined or? No, it'll I'm actually, you, you go as fast as the slowest character. So if it takes the, if, if. Uh, five minutes, right? That would be five yeah. minutes for them to cross, okay. And I'm curious what kind of what kind of math people are doing as you're like, what are you writing out? What what is it? What do you? And study? then we're also adding a, a minute for the boy to come back, right? And we're adding. Correct. That's you know? correct. So an example is like, let's say we have the professor who takes ten minutes, and the intern goes with him. So that is still ten minutes all the way. So mm -hmm. ten minutes across. Then there's the one minute return of, oops, mm -hmm. of the intern. I'll leave the professor over there. And uh, so one minute to reach. So we're 11 minutes in right now with one person across. 
But it says that the zombies will catch up to you in just over 17 minutes. So we have to do it. We got to get everyone across in less than 17 minutes. Yep. Am I understanding that? Okay. Or you, or it could be exactly 17 minutes since it's just over 17. Uh, we don't know. It. So, so 17 is your, your base. Like that's where you want to get. If you can get it in 17 minutes, you save everyone. Well, if we were doing what we were kind of in the process of doing and having the quickest in turn go back, 10 plus 5 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1, that's 18. Would that be quick enough to save everybody or, or the zombies so will be on us? So <laughs> let's see. So we have the 10, 10 is the cross, then it's 11 back. And then you're saying maybe the janitor goes this time now. So it's five more minutes across. Yes. So that's, we were 11. So this is now taking us up to uh, 16. Uh -huh. And then there's 17 on the way back. Whoops. Uh, 17 on the way back. 10, oh 10 plus five plus two. And then that'll be 19 because she's two minutes across. Uh, if, if they go back. So that's 19 minutes. If we 19. go in that order of the slowest, to the fastest with the intern carrying the lantern the whole time 19 uh which uh we have to get 17 or less is our goal 17 so 17 or less so um could we then have um i forget their titles uh the one that takes two minutes mm -hmm. pull that up We'll call her like the lab assistant, I guess. I should. Okay. That's good. Good advice because I I made this brand new, so I can actually like maybe. Um, well, I'll go back and redo the slides so that they they have names or something so that we know. So we'll okay. say lab assistant. Intern. Lab assistant, yeah. and then um, the janitor. Mm -hmm. So if they go together, they would then travel at five minutes, correct? Because correct. he travels at five. Okay. Oh, sorry. If we left the professor there. Sorry. Oh, on the other side, this professor. Yeah. So we do the ten minutes across first, okay? Yes, and then the the intern that had already traveled back. Okay. Good, and then if we have the um, janitor mm -hmm. and the lab assistant go together, that's now five. Okay. And now we need um, the who is the intern? Yep. To travel over. That would be the lab assistant has to take the lantern back. Oh. Yeah, we still need that lantern to come back. Now, one of the things, too, because I, I know that we don't have a ton of time together. Um, so what I like to do sometimes is uh, I call these pillow problems, which is that we can uh, we can take them home and sleep on them. And uh, that way, if you want the I have the link to the video, which has the whole reveal. So if any of you are like, I, this is going to drive me crazy for the rest of the day, unless I know. So then each of you individually can, can decide if you want to go for the spoiler or not, or, um, and, and you can work it out on your own. And, uh, and then we'll have some time to kind of play with some of the other forms of uh, some of the games in here and do like a couple of the quicker ones that we can do uh, in this space because but there's also the mathy part of me always wants to like linger and solve the problem but i feel like we'll spend the whole time on this because this is a uh, it's one of those kind of problems that it's just like there's a lot of trial and error and there's a lot of um conversation that we can that we can have so uh, does that sound like a good, good plan is we'll sort of uh we can move from this and leave it as a pillow problem but you'll have a link to the reveal that way um oh we actually have someone uh oh now you have to figure it out yeah that's right justina <laughs> i'm gonna put it on you it's actually that's a good strategy i always use even with my college students i'll say it, it's a pillow problem just take it home and sleep on it and what's fun is like we we open up the work to other people because it's likely some of you may um, maybe this is the dinner conversation tonight with the family is you we actually my kids i have four teenagers at the house uh when I first saw this problem, we, I showed the video and then we talked about it at dinner and it was fun. It was like, like our whole dinner was just trying to like work through this and kids are like writing on their napkins and stuff. It was, it was fun. So, um, 
anyway, that's what I'm thinking we could do right now because we got a little taste of this and uh, and then I'll make sure you have the link to the video to see the uh, the result on here. And again, you've got all the slides. So now you could do this with students and um, yeah, play around with it. Any questions before I shift away from this game into something different? Like I'm putting the game, the doc, the Google doc in the chat right now. So everyone should Oh, good. Have. Perfect. And then you'll want to make a copy of this presentation. Uh, if you work off of this one here, everyone's work and stuff will start to show it. So you can go to file and then make a copy and then you'll have your own that you can, you can tweak, you can add any instructions that you want. Um, what I did originally here is I normally, I would embed the video, the YouTube video that um, where you can find this. If you Google zombie bridge crossing riddle, riddle it's a Ted ed uh, problem. And the video is actually there for you. The only problem is that it's, it's the honor system. Cause it'll, it'll, it's the full video. So it says, pause the video, but any student can go and watch the rest of it, which is why I kept the video off of this. And I'll share the video in a separate, uh, separately. So that way, uh, you can give this to your students and not worry that they're going to go ahead and just look ahead. Um, although a, you know, pretty savvy student could actually go ahead and just Google zombie bridge problem, but I'm gonna go ahead and just drop this in the chat right now. Here's the link to the video that has the, the whole thing, the, the setup and the, uh, the solution that comes at the end. So any other questions before we uh, try something different? And just to give you some justification. So one of the things that I do when I'm, what I'm trying to do with these games, any of them, there's the education piece of it, but, the other thing, and I talked about this when I did some of the work with the uh, teachers who came to my training sessions around remote teaching, is I'm trying to build peak experiences for students. Peak experiences basically are any experiences that are, are feel like elevated, like where they have like a heightened sense of like uh, enjoyment and, and fun and engagement and connection and collaboration. And the three part recipe to build these kind of experiences, both remotely, but also when you're in person, is um, to see if you can boost sensory appeal. So the, the things that we work with uh, appeal to our senses. And you notice like we started with this, it's a video, it's got all the sound effects and everything. Um, it's, 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 it, I could have written this as a word problem, but it's way more engaging as a video. So I wanted to make sure I had that in there. Raising the stakes basically just means asking more investment of your students. So I, a task like this is just given to them. They have to work it out. I don't say, here's the trick to solving it. You set up this system of equations and this is how you do it. It's, it's not, you, you have to work it out, which means I'm raising the stakes. You are more invested. And then breaking the script basically means um, disrupting sort of the, the routine that kids are used to. So students have an idea of what a Zoom class is like, and they have an idea of what math class is like. But if math class and math class on Zoom is a zombie riddle like this, it's, it just breaks their, their script of what they thought math class was going to be like today, which makes it stand out. So that's what I'm doing in any of these games that I'm going to share with you right now. Do the same thing. So let me go ahead and share one other one that this one's a little faster. And, uh, and this one is known as the line game. And this doesn't require any materials. You actually, I have a slide deck for you with this, um, but it's actually, this is it. This is all you have. So for this, if you happen to have any paper or pencil, what you need is you need to draw this image, this shape. And, uh, and the rule is you cannot lift your pencil once you start. The lines cannot cross. So you can't like draw the circles and then draw the line through the circles. You can't cross lines. And the lines cannot overlap, which means you can't like retrace your steps. Um, so looking at this image right now, if you have a piece of scratch paper or anything like that, uh, feel free to go ahead and try drawing this shape if you want. In the chat, I'm going to drop the, the link to this game here. So you'll have a, an opportunity to make a copy of it. And if you don't have paper, you can digitally draw lines over this and recreate this here. Um, this is a task here is, is this, like a short five minute warm up. This would be a, a way when I'm trying to get kids to talk online or engage a little bit more. What's nice with these kind of tasks is they're low threat. Like, although there is uh, a, a right answer we're looking for the ability to draw this there's not the pressure of like like having to come up with an answer uh using something that you learned prior we're all working on instinct here and we're all going to make lots of mistakes as we do that and there's something that that opens up the the 
lines of communication when kids are in breakout rooms that uh, I had secondary teachers tell me that when they started doing these games with students, that it was the first time their cameras came on, like, because there was just something that was game, that was gamified <laughs> with this, that kind of helps. So, uh, and let me know if any of you think you found the solution to this one, um, yeah. or if you have an idea. And while you're working on that, I'm going to go ahead and drop in the chat the folder for with all the games. So if you click that link, you're going to have access to all the different games I made. Uh, most of these are, most of them. I games. Yeah. <laughs> it's all. But I like it. I like it, but I hate it. <laughs> it's, you know what it is? It's one of those things where the challenge is there, where it's like, it's, it's an itch you can't scratch for a little bit. And then, uh, and so there's that frustration element of it. And uh, once you know the solution, the uh it's fun to do with students the other thing that's also fun is don't feel like you have to have all the answers uh when you do this sometimes i like to bring these to students and say i haven't figured it out yet let's work on it together and collectively we work together and what's nice with that is it gets rid of this idea of uh there's like the, the traditional way where we, we give a problem and then whoever solves it first sort of is like deemed like, you know, this is the successful math student. And, and then we'll let that the same kids who are quick at solving things kind of lead the class. This kind of changes the dynamic where we're, we're going to all solve it together and we're going to share our thinking and come and So we'll struggle together and then we'll, we'll learn together. And by doing that, it brings the class closer together. That's what I love. And so all of the games that you'll see in the, the folder that I shared are pretty much like, that you can use it with any age and uh, with the exception of some, like there's one that's around uh, functions and stuff. So that's obviously for older students. Um, the block game is for primary grade students, although older students might have some fun with it, but they might solve it pretty quickly. Um, so you'll play around and you'll get a sense. Almost every one of them have instructions on there so that it's all pretty self-explanatory, but uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about any of the games. Um, oh, we have someone who almost has it. Any other, anyone have it? I think I have it. I don't All think right. I have it, Mike, but I think that I'm a math person too. And yeah. I am struggling. I've used all these papers. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm like, I want to do this with my son. He's eight years, seven years old. And he loves like to think like this. And I'm trying to go all kinds of ways to make it without lifting my pencil. This is, I need to know the answer now. <laughs> let's, let's do it. Right. Let's not leave anyone hanging. So we'll let's, let's go ahead. Does anyone, if they think they have it, I'll, I'll go ahead and just scribe just for speed sake. Let's go ahead and just, anyone want to walk me through how you think to do it? And I'll trace I think it. I have it. Okay. What do you got? Okay. Let's see if I can describe it is, is the challenge. Okay. So I, I think there's several ways, but this is, Maybe one way. You start at the very top. Mm -hmm. The line that's vertical. Start at the very top. Good. Stop there. Go to the outer big circle. To curve to the right. Okay. And then stop. And then go up the vertical line. Mm -hmm. And then stop. Okay. And go left on the curved line. Oh. Okay, and then stop. <laughs> Let me see what, I, what else did I draw? Did I draw that? Okay, Ooh, wait, wait. Drawing it and then explaining it is is a, a little bit of a different processing You're doing here. Great. You're doing great. Okay, right so I did that and then go down the vertical line mm -hmm. and then stop, go to the right and curve up stop, go up the vertical line, stop, go left on the curved line and go downwards, stop, and then go down the vertical line. You got it. That you was awesome. And that was really well explained. I'll, I'll be, that was really good. 
And think about like the metacognition that's there. Like you're, you're, you solved it. You had to think about that. Then you had to hold on to your solution and then communicate it to someone else who could scribe it. And I could see faces where people were kind of seeing like as you were going, it's like they could envision where you're going with it. So I think it helps everyone who was like, I need to know the answer. Now we've got it. So that's awesome. Now, Veronica, I know you said we, we, we got some time limitations here. Is this about where we're at our stopping spot? Oops, you're muted. Oh, I think you're still muted. But five more minutes. Sorry, I kept okay, going. Okay, perfect. Five yeah. more minutes. Excellent. Yeah. All right, y'all want to do one more? You got, all right, let's do it. Okay. Uh, let's do another fun one. And um, were any of you in my training sessions at all? Um, could someone just put a yes or say yes on the microphone just because I, uh, you know, some of these things I did in the training session. So I can either do an oldie but goodie or um, I can try to keep them fresh. Anyone, um, if I don't see a yes, I'll assume you weren't and then I can share. All right, let's go ahead with this one. Um, so this, this one here is called the wall game. And the wall game is a maze and it's, uh, the way we're going to use this is uh, unlike a regular maze, you'll see here in the image that the the paths that you can walk through have these color barriers that you can actually pass through. You can pass through a blue barrier and you can pass through the red barrier. You just can't go through the bricks. That's the rule with the maze. Now, the interesting thing with this game is that if you pass through a red barrier, you can't go through any other red barriers until you go through a blue barrier. Um, and then Likewise, when you go through the blue, you can't go through any more blues until you go through a red. So you have to go red, blue, red, blue, or blue, red, blue, red. Um, that's the rule. Now you can go through the same barrier more than once. You just can't do it right in a row. You can't go through a red barrier and then turn around and go right back through that red barrier. You have to go through something blue first. This is what the maze looks like. And I'm not going to leave this up terribly long because I, I want people to have a chance just to kind of think about it. Um, but the tool that you're going to use, if you look up at my... Um, on the Google slides, there's a, a line tool. So if you see where like the text box is and then there's the shape tool up here, if you click on that little arrow up there, it gives you all these options and the very bottom option when you do that is called the scribble tool. And you can actually draw right on top of the slide. Um, so that's one way that you can do that is just draw on, on the slide. Uh, the other thing that you could do is I could share my screen and you could annotate right on top of it so we can see each other's work. So there's a few different ways you could you could try this problem. The uh, as I said, the objects, a couple of the rules is you cannot go through the same barrier barrier twice in a row, um, and you cannot pass through any of the brick walls. Those are the only two rules I have. And other than that, you just try to to make your way through the maze. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to drop this in the chat again. It's called the wall game, and and then you'll have your own version of this that you're able to. Uh, Go ahead and, and oh my goodness gracious, I got so many tabs open. That's the downside of having this many things up. Well, you have the folder. So if you look in the folder, you'll be able to find the wall game in there. And, uh, and I'll go ahead and just get that queued up for a second. So let's go ahead and if you can open the wall game. Is that not in there? Oh, I did not put the wall. Oh, I, let me fix that. Let me go ahead and put the wall game in. It's like one of my favorite ones to do. So thanks for your patience with that. All right, so first I'm gonna give you a copy of this slide so you can start working on it on your own. All right, here you go. There is the wall game link to make your own copy of it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in the chat for you all. So that way you'll be able to uh, not the chat in the folder for you. So you'll have your own version. It didn't let me open it. Oops, let me fix it quickly. Uh, I might've pulled it from a protected folder and yep. Let me go ahead and just uh, change the permissions to anyone can do it. And if you refresh now, it should work perfectly. Thanks for letting me know. Cause I sometimes grab it for folders that are, that are locked. So here we go. And I'm going to add this to your folder. This, by the way, um, all of these games, if you're, if you're TikTok people, 
Uh, there's a guy called the puzzle guy on TikTok, and he has all these interesting games. He does it on paper and pencil with a Sharpie or pap paper with a Sharpie. And what I did is I, I converted them to work in Google Slides so kids can do it remotely. Um, and, and so if you're wanting the solutions to some of these, if, if we're not together, uh, you can always look on that if you're uh, uh, on TikTok. And so here we go. I'm dropping in the uh, wall game also in the folder. So you all have that. So uh, let's go ahead and let me just share my screen momentarily here and let us just, if we want, if anyone wants to try to annotate, if you think you have a way to solve it, I'll go ahead and just share full screen. Uh, are you able to see the wall game in full screen right now? Yes. Okay, good. If anyone wants to use the annotate tools, which is basically where it says you're viewing Mike's screen, there's a thing that says view options and you can click on that and you'll get the draw tools, annotate. And you can go ahead and draw on the maze if you want to experiment. Um, multiple people can draw at the same time. And uh, if anyone thinks they have the solution, we could try uh, seeing if it works. And Veronica, feel free to jump in if, we, uh, if we're at our time. So I, I'm- Okay, I will. Okay. And I'm curious what people's strategies are right now as you're trying to visualize this. Like, do, does anyone have like a, a go-to like starting spot for this? Sometimes people have said that the starting at the exit is helpful because they can kind of see where we're like starting from the back and working backwards. And then when we do run out of time, if uh, if you'd like to see the solution, I can always just share it. Uh, if you're uh, and if you don't want to see the solution, we can just have you close your eyes for the the moment when uh, the solution gets revealed. Terry, I think you're on to something. And what's nice with these problems as you're working is that because it's not immediately easy for anyone, but it's also not impossible. Like the most of these in my experience students of lots of different ages have been able to solve it. It takes certain ages longer, um, but surprisingly, something like the wall game, sometimes younger kids see the solution quicker than us as adults. Uh, sometimes adults overthink some of the rules. I've, I've kind of revised the rules. The TikTok rules from the guy were pretty vague and there was lots of misinterpretation. So I've been trying to like shape it a little bit and, uh, but again, I like to use these with the goal of bringing people together. So this in small group with four or five kids in a group uh, often gets kids on the microphone. They get collaborating. You could add some friendly competition. Sometimes I like to have breakout rooms compete against one another to see who can solve it quickest. Or if I feel like competition is not a good thing for my students, that maybe we do it collectively. That, But I'll set like a time, say, all right, we have uh, 10 minutes to get out of this maze. So um, we're all stuck and we're all in it together. Each of you can work on your own plan and, uh, and collaborate and share ideas, but let's work together and get out in 10 minutes and see if we can beat that. And um, there's something that's fun and it does, again, with the, it brings the group closer together. That's our goal, building in some of these connections. Anyone else have a thought? I'm gonna go ahead and stop my share since this looks like no one else is annotating right now. And uh, you may, I'm assuming you're working on your, your own solution. 
Um, the last thing that I'll share with you, just a couple of the other ones, if you're interested in something that's a little bit more of a uh, more mathy, if you will, um, this potion game, I really like. You'll see it in the folder that you have. Um, this is kind of set up. I don't know if you've ever seen Die Hard 3 uh, or Die Hard 2, one of the sequels to Die Hard. It's similar to that where Bruce Willis had to like sh um, transfer water back and forth. Um, this is basically a scenario where you have an antidote to a, a potion, a, a cursed potion, and you have to give the exact precise amount of it, which is basically a um, you need six cups of potion precisely to save your friend from the curse. And you have these items to measure it with. Um, and you have to basically pour out into these different containers and uh, without spilling any, you can't discard any and stuff. Um, so this is also another fun one. And you'll notice that the way I set it up on the Google slides, it's almost like they have like a lab book that they can record their solutions in. And again, a lot of trial and error, a lot of playing around, a lot of good discussion and fairly easy mathematics in terms of the calculations. Like it doesn't require um, a lot of sophisticated math understanding, but it's, it's hard for everybody. Um, so like, you know, in a good way. So these are some of the different ranges that you'll see. Some of them are light, like just kind of riddle kind of things. Some of them, you know, mazes and logic puzzles, and some are more like traditional math um, problems. You'll see the full range in there. Um, I'm be happy to entertain any other questions people have. Um, if you'd like to see the solution, I can quickly share that with you all. Uh, did anyone figure it out, by the way, before instead of having the solution come from me? Nope. <laughs> all right. So if you if you don't want it, if you don't want it spoiled, just close your eyes for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and draw the solution and uh, and then I'll tell you when it's OK to close your eyes. So I'm going to go ahead with full screen real quick. And here's the solution. And this is where I was telling Terry that she was on to something or he I can't remember. I didn't see who Terry was, so it could be he or she. So. Um, And so that's the solution. Keep your eyes closed if you don't want to see it. It's not safe to look yet. Uh, that's it. And this part up here is the key. Uh, that's the little trick there. So, um, okay, it's uh, safe to open your yeah. eyes. All right. So okay. Veronica. Yes, so we are now ready for our raffle. Yay. Thank you, Mike. That was wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing all your talents with us. And I do appreciate those fun games that we can take across all great levels. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So now without uh, further ado, we have Mr. Kevin Chow, who actually gave you a number when you uh, you registered, you came into the Zoom meeting. So he is, Mr. Chow is going to pull up our wheel of uh, fortune here. Our what's the name wheel? Our wheel of names. Thinking, so when you come in late, do you still get a number or no? Yes, you have a name, Lucy. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, don't worry. I, I've got I've got everybody in there. Yep. There's, there's all, all twenty people. Yeah. Okay. So there I'm gonna go. share my screen. All right. And let's spin the wheel. Yeah. Oh, actually, hold on. Let's do that one more time. Hold on. Do it properly. We want the oh. music, right? Does, yeah, has let's... everyone seen this? Is everyone familiar with it? Can... Oh. Let's do that again. Okay. So let's stop share. Reshare. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay. okay. Number, number six. That is Hugo Espanta. Oh my gosh. Who goes on a roll? Okay. And next. Okay. Next one. Spin again. <laughs> this one, it is Miss Guero. Miss who? Mrs. Gu Guero. Guero? Okay, I know where who goes out. Miss uh Miss Guero, can you please put your the name of your school? Miss Guerrero. Miss Guerrero, can you please put the name of your school in the chat for me through a DM? Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. So you I'm going to show you what you actually want. Let me pull up my. 
So let's go here. So we have our winners today. One will receive a $50 gift card and our other winner receives a Doug Fitch Fisher, both the, the assessment playbook and the learn, distant learning playbook. So thank you so much for joining today. And tomorrow we will meet here again, same time, same channel with a, we will not have Mike tomorrow, but we hope to have him in the future. So thank you again, everyone. Might anyone have any questions at this time? All right. Veronica, thank you. This is Julie. Thank you, Mike, for coming and um, oh, yes, joining sorry. us and sharing. I know that Everybody that was here today was able to zoom in and enjoy um, receiving the information with you. Also our two winners, congratulations. Um, zoom back in tomorrow, we have the artist and teacher, Jose Ramirez. He's a teacher at Esperanza Elementary. You may be familiar uh, with his work. He's a very famous Los Angeles based artist. So he'll be joining us and we also have more prizes. So I encourage your colleagues and friends to join in too. And hi Lucy, it's so good to see you. Hi, Julie. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. You, Join guys. the fun tomorrow. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Have fun with Bye, the games. Mr. Sponto. Yeah, thank all you right. all thank for joining you. us today. Thank you. I hope it's okay because my lunch is until 1130. So I came it's in. It's okay. And then we'll see what I'll, what I'll do is I'll I'll share the, the things that you missed and I'll send them to you. Okay? okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good seeing you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is fun.